Hello and welcome back to Broadside Game with me Zug and today we're going to take a quick look at the wizard and go over a few of the basics. So if you want to go for a caster class in Enshrouded, uh, they're incredibly fun. I really like the wizard. And the uh, thing is, you need to know where to get the spells and how to use them. So what you need first is some sort of staff, just any staff. And then you need a spell. So to start with, you're not going to have access to be able to make these. You'll just find them randomly in boxes. But as you play through the game a little bit, very early on, I think he's the second character you, well, the second uh, crafter you unlock. You get to unlock the alchemist, which is this guy. So at the alchemist, under ammo, you will have lots and lots of spells, which you'll be able to craft and use. The first spell you'll probably get is Ice Bolt, which is just water and shroud liquid. Shroud liquid obviously comes from the shroud, the mushrooms. Water comes from any of the wells you find around town or around the map. And later on, you can actually make your own well and place it in your base so you have just constant access to water. But these, these like Ice Bolt, Fireball, Chain Heal, etc., etc., with the times 20 next to them, are like arrows. You hold down your right button, and as you can see, you can mouse wheel up like Fireball or Eternal Ice Bolt. Now, Eternal Ice Bolt is exactly what it is. It says it is. You cannot run out of this. You just have it in your inventory, and this lasts forever. But the Fireball as you can see, it has a number next to it, 134. That's how many charges you have. Unless you use them, you lose charges. The eternal spells, the first one you get from doing a quest for the alchemist. And then eventually you get more and more that you can craft. Um, eternal acid bite, eternal ice bolt, eternal fireball, etc, etc. And they just, you keep getting them as you go along. They're slightly expensive to craft, but they are eternal, so you just have them in your bag and you can use them as as you please. But as a wizard, or a healer, whichever choice you want to go for, battle wizard, whatever, you'll also want a wand and a shield. You don't need anything with the wand, although it does run out of durability like all weapons do. So the more you use the wand, you'll have to repair it, but it doesn't require any charges. It is your off weapon. But do make sure when you get your staff, let's just do it with this one, equip it. Because then, even if you've got your wand out, you can press Q and it switches straight over to your staff. You can also do this with bows if you're playing a ranger, but to about the wizard today. So Q is your offhand ranged weapon, but as a wizard, it'll be your main weapon. So I'm just going to equip that, equip that back on. So my wizard's not very high level at the moment, but my main character, I have tried out some of the wizard's uh, skill trees. And this is kind of what I've settled on, really. This one I've gone with an ice wizard, and we're just going through here, spirit, this is the way, down into ice man, sub-zero. We're grabbing the intelligence boost here, grab wizard there, and head through chain hit, mass destruction, and intelligence. I mean, we can grab these later on when you do eventually get some shroud spells, but you don't need them at the moment. Of course, if you want to go for a fire build, you obviously just go down through Arsonist, Pyromaniac, Radiant Aura, Sun Aura, and then into Spirit. I would suggest, as well, if you're building a wizard, that once you've got your desired element here, you come down into Battle Mage and pick up some of these. Especially, uh, do -do, yeah, Unity, Sting, Wand Master, Spirit, and Intelligence. You can also grab Blink, which is quite funny. It turns your dodge roll, which is on control. It turns that into a Blink, and you can either use it offensively with Blink Attack, or defensively. I usually go for the uh, Emergency Blink over the Blink Attack, just because if anything gets that close to you, it is quite dangerous. And once you've hit in here, grab these abilities, 
I would probably suggest you to go over here, pick up a little bit of stamina, and grab double jump. This double jump is, is very, very useful on all characters. Uh, you can go up a bit more and pick up maybe some survivor skills, just to increase how well food helps you. Or if you want to, you can go into athlete and pick up some constitution, but it's not really worth it. You don't want to be hitting these strength nodes. They're completely pointless for you. So I would kind of suggest hitting into survivor and grabbing a few bits to just make yourself a bit more stout with some lovely, lovely endurance and adding a few bits more to make food more useful to you. But obviously, build it however you want. You know, if you wanted to go full battle wizard and then go into tank so you can, you know, use heavy armor and a shield, go for it. I just prefer the casty type and also healer. But that's kind of how I would go with the wizard. Obviously, I'm not on my main one as she's still swept into ranger and assassin at the moment, but that's kind of what I would do. But yeah, that's the basics of a wizard, really. Um, just know that when you do make one, if it's your first character on your first run through on a completely clean world, you will have to wait until you've unlocked the alchemist before you can really craft the spells. But once you've got that, it's pretty fun going, to be honest. Once you've unlocked them and got your first eternal spell, just run around setting stuff on fire. Just make sure you've got a big stock of mana potions until you get some better armor with some regen on them, and uh, you're pretty much good to go. And then my last, last tiny bit of advice before I go, is do make sure you have yourself a melee weapon on your bar. And this is because either for when you're swarmed by bugs or really annoying little creatures that don't have much health, but there's a lot of them, you just cleave through them. And also it's for breaking open doors and barrels. Very important nothing's more important than loot in this game but there you go that's my uh, quick guide to getting started with a wizard i hope you've enjoyed it and if you have please like subscribe ring that little bell for notification it really does help us out and uh, i'll catch you all for the next one so uh, see you later folks